When Jesus was on the cross, why did he drink sour wine? And why are churches around the world drinking wine in communion? All problems and answers of the world are in the Bible. So let us interpret the Bible with the Bible. Discern spiritual thoughts with spiritual words as written in 1 Corinthians 2 verse 13 to 14 and find out God's will hidden in the sour wine. God has given us an eternal statute so that we will not die. The way to be saved, the way to be a new creation without dying was written through Moses. Turn to Leviticus 10 verse 8 to 11. The Lord then spoke to Aaron saying, Do not drink wine or strong drink, neither you nor your sons with you, when you come into the tent of meeting, so that you will not die. It is a perpetual statute throughout your generations, and so as to make a distinction between the holy and the profane, and between the unclean and the clean, and so as to teach the sons of Israel all the statutes which the Lord has spoken to them through Moses. This statute means that the priests who stand at the tent of meeting or the temple of God, which are the pastors of today who stand at the church pulpits, must not drink wine or strong drink. He said, do not drink wine or strong drink so that you will not die. This statute was not just for the Old Testament. It is a perpetual statute. A perpetual statute means it is the statute and the law of God that we must keep forever. Then who is drinking the wine that God said not to drink? People drink wine in the church during communion. After the COVID-19 outbreak, no one could gather together and worship for more than one year. So people started thinking of strange forms of communion and uploaded them online for people to do at home. For example, by using pre-filled disposable communion cups with wafers, people say that they are eating Jesus' flesh and blood. When you understand the truth as the truth through the written word of the Bible, you must realize while you're physically alive just how much people did communion, baptism, laying on of hands, prayer in tongues, fasting, casting out demons, healing, and performing miracles and telling fortunes in Jesus' name, all of which had nothing to do with God's will. God's law clearly said, Do not drink wine or strong drink, neither you nor your sons with you, when you come into the tent of meeting, so that you will not die. As a result of drinking wine and strong drink for 2020 years, Everyone has physically died, whether they were pastors or priests or teachers who used the Bible to lead worship. This is because no one has ever kept the statute that should be kept forever. In today's terms, the Catholic priests, Christian pastors, and everyone who serves in the church pertain to the Nazarite. This is also written in Numbers 6 verse 2 to 3. Speak to the sons of Israel and say to them, when a man or woman makes a special vow, the vow of a Nazarite, to dedicate himself to the Lord, he shall abstain from wine and strong drink. He shall drink no vinegar, whether made from wine or strong drink, nor shall he drink any grape juice, nor eat fresh or dried grapes. The priests, the Nazarites, who must dedicate themselves to God and give a holy service, must not drink strong drink, so that they will not die. It does not simply mean to avoid it. This is a statute given to keep forever. God said to not drink any vinegar made from wine, that is the sour wine. But the enemies gave it to Jesus when he was crucified. Jesus Christ is God's servant and the high priest. Yet the enemies mocked him and gave him the vinegar of the wine. The Bible scholars said that Jesus was given sour wine as an anesthetic to reduce pain. But think about it carefully. It was the Jews, the high priests, and the Pharisees at that time who sentenced Jesus to the most brutal death out of their jealousy by nailing him on the cross. They were the enemies who mocked him even through that extreme pain. 
would they have really given him sour wine as an anesthetic? Such interpretations are only teachings of demons who stand on the pulpit. What was the fundamental reason Jesus drank the sour wine? It was because of what he did to the disciples before his death on the cross. Jesus gave the disciples wine, but he did not say, do this in remembrance of me. But the truth is, the communion in the churches have been feeding sour wine even now. That is because of what Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 25 to 26. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This was not written by any of the three disciples, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Yet, communion has continued until this day because of these words. Thus, what Jesus did has become the basis for people eating bread and drinking wine during communion. This has led to a fatal outcome. The Son, Jesus, broke the law that God has commanded to keep forever. He made all his disciples eat and drink wine. As a result, Jesus himself died and all the disciples physically died. And the churches that call on God's name and Jesus' name for 2,000 years have been taking the communion that is breaking God's commandment. Jesus Christ broke the decree that God has commanded to keep forever and this made even Apostle Paul sin in the end, who was considered to have the highest spirituality at that time. This was why the enemies who killed Jesus made him drink sour wine as he died on the cross, and everyone died for their own iniquity for 2020 years, as prophesied in Jeremiah 31 verse 30. But everyone will die for his own iniquity. Each man who eats the sour grapes his teeth will be set on edge. The sour grapes and the sour wine that Jesus drank on the cross contained an astounding mystery of the kingdom of God hidden inside. So in the end, why did Jesus drink sour wine on the cross? That was showing that even Jesus Christ, the Son of God, cannot escape death if He breaks God's decree. This is proof that the Bible is the mystery of the kingdom of heaven that is opened only in the time when the Spirit of truth comes and guides us into all the truth and testifies about Jesus. The Spirit of truth has now come in reality to reveal the new things, the hidden things, which God had planned and prepared before the ages. When the Spirit of truth comes, and guides us into all the truth without leaning to the right or the left, then can we finally understand the truth. So now, stop breaking God's perpetual statute by performing the physical communion in the church. You must wake up from your deep spiritual sleep. Grace World Podcast, full audio version available at Podbean and Apple Podcasts.